What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show two formulas you can use to find the last column number of any row. In this worksheet, I have a range of cells where the first column is date and the last column is revenue. The last column number is 6 and if you wanted to find that number, then you can use the formula 1 method, which I'll show you now. If I want to find the last column number based on row 2, then I want to see which cell in each column of that row is not blank. If a cell is not blank, then we would get back a boolean value of true. But if the cell is blank, then we would get back false instead. In cell A12, I'm going to type out equals to select the entire row for number 2. I can do this by doing shift space as a keyboard shortcut. And then do the not equal to symbol or operator. And then do nothing, which you can represent by doing a double quotes. Press enter and we get back a list of true and false values for that row. Next, I want to find the column number for each cell in the selected row. I can do that with the column function. In cell A13, I'm going to type out equal to column and then I'm going to reference the entire row for row number 2. Shift space, press enter and we get back a list of numbers from 1 all the way to 16384 which is the last column in that worksheet. In row 12, true and false can be represented by the numbers 1 and 0. One way to confirm this is by using the int function, although the function isn't really needed for the main formula. In cell A12, I'm going to wrap this formula in an int function, then press enter, and we get back the 1s and 0s. Next, we're going to multiply each cell in row 12 by each cell in row 13. In cell A14, I'm going to type out the formula equals to Select all of row 12 and then times all of row 13. Press enter and we get back a list of numbers from 1 to 6, which is the last column number, and then afterwards everything else is zeros. Finally, we can use the max function to find the largest number in our array, which will also be the last column number. I'm gonna wrap this around the max function. Enter and we get back the number 6. Now I'm gonna turn all of these separate steps into a single formula. In cell B11, I'll type out equals to, select row 2, not equal to nothing, and close this in the parentheses, and then times the column function, reference row 2, and then you see max function, and then press enter, we get back the number 6. I'm going to delete all the values from rows 12 to 14, and just focus on the formula in cell B11. If I enter a value in one of the blank cells in row 2, then the formula should update itself as well. In cell G2, I'll just type out any random characters, and we get an updated last column number of 7. If I skip column H, and enter something column I instead, press enter, we get the updated number of 9 this time, since column I is the ninth column in row number 2. The second formula I'm going to show you will be much more efficient than the first one, and possibly easier to use as well. This formula uses a combination of the lookup function and the column function to find the last column number based on any row. In cell A12, I'm going to do something similar to before, where I'm going to select the entire row 2 and see which cells are blank or not. I can do this by doing equal to, select row 2, and then do not equal to, nothing. Press enter, and we get back a list of true and false values like before. But this time, I'm going to modify the formula by dividing the whole thing from 1. I'm going to do equal to 1 divided by, then open parentheses and close parentheses towards the end, press enter, and we get back a list of values which is 1 and divisible by zeros. In cell A13, I'm going to use the column function with the reference being row number 2, equal to column, and just reference row 2, enter, and we get back all the column numbers from 1, the very first column, to the very last column of 16384. Next, we want to combine the two formulas with the lookup function. The way this will work is that we want to compare the lookup range, which will be all values in row 12, to the lookup value of 2. If 2 does not exist, then the function will look for the next lowest value, close to 2, towards the end of the lookup range. Divisible by 0 errors is not a number, so those will get ignored. Once the function finds a match in the lookup range, it will output the corresponding value next to it in the return vector which in this case are the column numbers in row 13. In cell A14, I'm going to type out equals to lookup, tab. The lookup value will be the number 2, comma. The lookup vector will be all the cells in row 12, comma. And the return vector or the result vector will be all the cells in row 13. Close this out and then press enter. 
and we get back the number six which is also the last column in row two let's make the actual formula without the helper columns i'm gonna delete everything from rows 12 to 14 and in cell b11 i'll start typing it out equal to lookup tab the lookup value will be two comma the lookup vector will be one divided by open parentheses reference is not equal to nothing and then close parentheses comma the result vector will be the column function referencing row two again close this out and then close this out again press enter and we get back the same numbers before let's test out the examples again if i enter something in row two column g any characters the formula updates to column seven if i skip column h but enter something in column i which is the ninth column press enter and we get back the number nine as well so that's it on two excel formulas you can use to find the last column number for any given row i hope you all found this video to be helpful and if you did then please like and comment down below what else you'd want to see and if you haven't already subscribe you can also follow me on instagram and linkedin to get updated of when i upload the next video until then i'll see you guys again next time